Hello everyone, this is Ben, and today we're looking at a test to IELTS essay. Let's have a look at the task we're given. Online news is not a reliable source of the truth. We should only trust recognized journalists. To what extent do you agree or disagree? Give reasons, relevant examples from your knowledge or experience. I suggest that you uh, pause the video to read the essay yourself. Think about what scores you would give it and see how close they match to mine. If you'd like to do that, this is the first slide. This is the second, which is the first body paragraph. This is the second and last body paragraph. And finally, this is the conclusion. As always, when scoring, ideally you should look at the uh, IELTS test to writing descriptors and descriptors which are available online for free. Let's take a look at my student's essay together. Think about what we would change. It's often believed that the sources from online news are so difficult to trust that we should only trust verified journalists. I totally disagree with this view as I think that online news is more reliable than people these days expect. It's not the sources from online news, it's the sources of online news. So difficult to trust? Well, it sounds a bit more like speaking style, a bit informal. But uh, it's okay because the grammar is correct. I think it's a bit too general. Online news is more reliable. It's often not. It's sometimes more reliable, often more reliable. It's not always more reliable. It's often more reliable than people these days expect. Now we move on to the first body paragraph. And this is where we hit a major problem with this essay. First body paragraph, the topic sentence is to begin with, trusting only recognized journalists is reasonable. So only them, not other people, not other sources is reasonable. But the next body paragraph, however, not only recognized journalists, but also online news is worth trusting. So saying both, you've got these two contradictory, if I can spell it, topic sentences. I could make, uh, make an argument, the sky is blue. I can't say on the one hand, the sky is blue. And then I can't say on the other hand, sky is orange or the sky is pink they can't both be true so if I say on the one hand many people claim the sky is blue on the other hand other people uh, on the other hand certain people argue that the sky is pink maybe crazy people or colorblind people then that would be okay so we have to change the words a little bit let's do that now Let's say to begin with, there are some persuasive arguments Sorry, a bit messy here, my, my G, that is a G. All right, more slowly arguments supporting the idea that trusting only recognized journalists is reasonable. First of all, there are a huge amount of fake news online. News is actually uncountable. So there is a huge amount of news uh, of fake news online. Interestingly, it's an uncountable noun. 
that ends with an S. It's not, uh, it's not a plural noun. Don't be deceived by the S. Uh, due to, let's say, improvements in online media, improvements in and the diversity of online media platforms, it seems that improvements and diversity are different things. All people can create news content. Content, again, is uncountable. Content actually has a different meaning, like the contents page of a book tells you what's in the book. Or the contents of a box is what's inside the box. The contents of my pencil case is what's inside my pencil case. Media content is uncountable. So this is the main one you'll use for IELTS. You're usually going to use the uncountable one. All people can create news content by themselves and upload it because it's uncountable. Online, well, you you usually upload to, don't you? You download from, upload to. So I think you can say post them online, but upload it, the news content, upload it to the internet, which can make online messy well online isn't a noun is it it's, it's either an adjective or an adverb so we have to change that which can result in so giving uh, an effect lead to result in result in is used with a a noun or ing verb, I'm going to use ing, result in the internet. Being full of fake news. Secondly, online news agencies have been emerging a lot. A lot is too informal. And I think there's a better word than emerging anyway. Let's say proliferating. Good IELTS word. Proliferating, expanding rapidly. In order to maximize the coverage, that's quite nice language, isn't it? News coverage. Um, I like that. They only focus on the number of contents. Well, content is uncountable, so we can't say number and we can't say contents let's say their output output is like yield or production their output of content by using uncertain and insufficient information maybe unverified is better there insufficient maybe need some explanation like not not detailed enough or in incomplete. I think unverified and incomplete might be better compared to other agencies run by recognized journalists. Well, I'd argue that recognized journalists don't usually run the agency. They usually just work for an agency. Like... Um, some television news station like uh, I shouldn't name any I suppose but uh, you can think of some famous ones they don't run the company that's what the executives do they just work for the company so personally I would just say compared to the work of recognized journalists or something like that Okay, and uh, again, we can't say, on the one hand, the sky is blue, on the other hand, the sky is 
uh, green. However, I personally still believe that not only recognized journalists, but also online news is worth trusting. First and foremost, all trust with all trust within news companies also provide the news online. That's a good point. As the digital population has been increasing, every news company puts its efforts. Well, we put our efforts into something, um, but it's a bit more like speaking style, isn't it? So let's change that. We can concentrate our efforts on something. That would be a nice expression. Concentrates its efforts on digital based news. In addition, even if the news is provided not by journalists, but personal creators, I wonder if The writer is referring to citizen journalists and professional journalists. I think it could be a bit clearer. So professional journalists, they do it for a job. Citizen journalists, just normal citizens who are recording videos on their phone and uh, making, making their own news stories online. Just normal people doing it. It would be re reliable enough for general people. Well, we usually say ordinary people or the public, sometimes the general public. This is because online creators would give people well created news content. To improve their subscribers. Well, TV news companies try to improve their ratings. Ratings is the people who watch TV subscribe. Um, well, you can subscribe to a YouTube channel or something like that. I mean, it's really expands their audience, isn't it? Because you don't always have to subscribe. But if we're saying s subscribers, I think it's really increase the number of subscribers, which can be turned to, I think, which can lead to Financial benefits, I guess, yes, but it's a bit general. The money that they make is usually from advertisements on the website. So let's say more advertising revenue. In conclusion, there are people who only uh, believe verified journalists. I opine. We're missing a key word, aren't we, for cohesion? In conclusion, although or while, while there are people, while there are some people who only believe verified journalists, again, verified, maybe not the best word. well-known, reputable, respected. I opine that the sources, again, not from, of online news are reliable nowadays. Not always, there's lots of fake news that are often also reliable nowadays. Thus, people should be encouraged to subscribe not only to the major journalists, but also online news. Again, subscribe doesn't include every method. I'll use a very general word, consume. We're consumers of media. Consume not only the work of well-known journalists, but also online news, that would be better. I'll just quickly read it to make sure there's no 
there are no errors I've made or anything I've overlooked. Okay, it's often believed that the sources of online news are so difficult to trust that we should not only trust verified journalists. I totally disagree with this, with this view as I think that online news is often more reliable than people these days expect. To begin with, there are some persuasive arguments supporting the idea that trusting only recognized journalists is reasonable. First of all, there's a huge amount of fake news online. Due to improvements in, and the diversity of, online media platforms, all people can create news content by themselves and upload it to the internet, which can result in the internet uh, being full of fake news. Secondly, online news agencies have been proliferating at a rapid rate recently. In order to maximize their coverage, they only focus on the output of content by using by using often unverified and incomplete information compared to other agencies run by recognized journalists. So there is a problem with the argument, isn't there? Talk about using, let's say, a suboptimal. Uh, giving suboptimal coverage um, and coming to the conclusion that online news is very reliable nowadays without even kind of hedging it with more cautious language like often or sometimes. So let's move on. However, I personally still believe that not only recognized journalists but also online news is worth trusting. I suppose it should be R, like this and this. First and foremost, all trustworthy news companies also provide the news online. As the digital population has been increasing, every news company concentrates its efforts on digital-based news. Yeah, in addition to uh, the legacy media, which is like print journalism, for example, and broadcast media, like TV news. In addition, even if the news is provided not only by professional journalists, but also citizen journalists, it would be, uh, sorry, even if the news is provided not by professional journalists, but instead by citizen journalists, it would be reliable enough for the general public. We're not imagining, we're not saying if the news were, so I don't think we should say would even if the news is, let's say it is often reliable enough. Oh, I've said often too many times, it is generally reliable enough. It tends to be reliable enough. It's generally reliable enough for the general public. This is because online creators, um, I'll get rid of woods, tend to give people well-created news content to increase their number of subscribers which can lead to more advertising revenue. So it's how they uh, make their livelihood. In conclusion, while there are people who only believe respected journalists, I personally opine that the sources of online news are often also very reliable nowadays. Thus, people should be encouraged to consume not only the works of major journalists, but also online news. The scores I arrived at Six overall, seven for grammar, six for the other parts. Grammar, I thought maybe just a seven. I can't give seven minus, but I would if I could. Why? Task response. Addresses all parts of the task, yep. Prevents a relevant position. Uh, yeah, I think generally. But some parts are unclear or inadequately developed. And crucially, not a seven because there's not a clear position throughout the response. Like I said, you can't say on the one hand, the sky is blue. On the other hand, the sky is red. So you have to acknowledge that you're considering two different viewpoints. 
I don't really get to begin with. I think on the one hand uh, would be better here. And then however is fine here. However, I personally still believe that this is true. Um, and we talked about this a little bit already, but um, it talks about problems with maximizing their coverage by releasing kind of partial information that they're not too confident about. It's not been verified. So why then is there such a big focus on the the high quality, the supposedly high quality of the news? It's not clear and consistent. It's it's in fact a bit contradictory saying two things that don't agree with each other, that contradict each other. So certainly not a seven. It's not a clear position throughout, even though there are some good main ideas that are extended and supported. Moving on to coherence and cohesion. Uh, six again, so arranges information ideas coherently, clear overall progression. Progression, I think so, yeah. Introduction, giving my opinion. On the one hand, but I don't believe this because. Conclusion. Cohesive devices are used effectively, but cohesion and or between sentences may be faulty or mechanical. Um, I don't think anything was used mechanically or repetitively. It was even too faulty. I thought it was generally good. Um, and paragraphing was pretty good too, but the problem is... Um, there's not a clear central topic presented within each paragraph for exactly the same reasons. You can't say, on the one hand, dogs are the best pets. On the other hand, cats are the best pets. You can't say both. So you have to use careful language looking at the blue parts. Lexical resource. Um, I felt that there were attempts to use less common vocabulary, but with some inaccuracy. So, for example, improve and increase. Uh, turn to is not quite right there. Journalists don't usually run the company. They could be independent journalists who run a website, I suppose. Emerging a lot. Um, well, we could say um, additional ones have been emerging at a rapid rate, but it's a bit hard to do a lot. Certainly not good language for uh, IELTS test two. And again, post them online versus upload to, download from. So um, for me, there was some recognition of um, relevant language for the topic, fake news, uh, online news agencies. It might be a bit more common to talk about uh, media outlets, online news outlets. Um Recognized journalists, I don't think it was really explained properly what that means. Again, the word choice make the internet messy. Uh, it's not really how we would talk about the internet usually. But there was lots, lots of good stuff too, like maximize their coverage. But overall, my feeling was that precise words were not used like um, we talked about how unverified and incomplete might be better than ins uncertain and insufficient. And lastly, the grammar I thought was the, the best part. Seven, just, I thought just a seven. 
for seven, variety of complex sentences, frequent error-free sentences, good control of grammar and, uh, and punctuation. And I think you can see that it wasn't always perfect, like missing this word here, which I, I think was probably just a bit careless. Um, but when you look here, most of the problems are with uh, the word choice rather than the grammar. Uh, it's trying to make long, complex sentences using words like as and which and phrases like even if. Even if it's not perfect, like using words perhaps incorrectly. And using quite a wide range, like due to this, this is possible now. In order to do this, they do this. Not this other thing. Again, as, as this is happening, this is now the case. Um, so there weren't frequent error-free sentences in terms of vocabulary, but in terms of the, the grammar, I think um, there were many error-free sentences. So therefore, these are the scores I came up with. I wonder how similar your predicted scores were to mine. As always, you can leave a comment to let me know what you think, if you think I've got anything wrong, or if there's anything you particularly agree with, or if there's anything you'd like me to change in future videos. As always, thank you for listening and watching. That's all from me. Goodbye.